Hello, this is Mike, and I thought I would do a new updated uh, video tutorial of how I use breakbeats in Tidal. I've done a video like this a while ago, but I work with breakbeats very differently now, and I thought I would just create a new tutorial to show what I do. Um, so I'll just get right into it. The first step is to cheat. <laughs> uh, and when I say cheat, what I mean is I actually pre-slice my breaks ahead of time into eighth note chunks. Um, and this, I say this is cheating because from a pure live coding or pure title point of view, um, you may want to work with a complete loop or complete drum break as a single file and then in code slice it up or chop it up into parts. However, I've found that pre-slicing makes for a more expressive and a, a kind of a faster experience from the performer's point of view. I mean, when you're in front of an audience, I just like to be able to do things quickly. So pre-slicing offers some flexibility that, that I really like. Uh, there are some things that you can do in title with full loops, full breaks that slicing does not get you. So I like to actually do both potentially live, but uh, I want to focus on the sliced uh, method right here. So I've got a few breaks I'm going to work with here, these Akuma 1 through 7. The first one here has five slices. So again, these are all eighth note chunks and sounds like this. And that one's, yeah, that one's got five chunks. Uh, some of these have 32 chunks, but they're all like an eighth note length. So let's, let's get into the code here. So, so Accumul one. Now, if I want to fill this up with eight samples, since they're, it's split up into eighth note chunks. Now I've only got five different samples. So if I do a run of five, that'll just play the five samples. Um, but some of them are going to repeat if I do it this way, but it sounds like this. So it's kind of spreading that run of five over eight. So some of them repeat. If I do a run of eight, then uh, the run will actually repeat back to the first sample after it reaches the fifth. And it sounds like this. So we're just changing the speed at which the samples are iterated through. Um, if you want to add a little bit of variation, you can add some density to the run, which will make the run go faster. Uh, if I just do something like this, it sounds like this. You can add some conditions in here, you know, every two density, you know, 1.1 or 1.2. So you can you can add some conditional logic in there to, to vary things up that way. Um, if you are okay with randomness, you can actually use the irand function and just pick a random sample. Uh, but if you'd prefer a more deterministic way of doing it than, you know, d density or um, using one of the conditional functions might be more of your thing. I'll just use irand for right now. So that's cool. Um, yeah, already it's it's coming together kind of nicely. If if you like this this break core jungle style of of thing, um, I'm using a BP, BPM of 200 right now. Yeah. Um, so now my slices are already close to this BPM. If I change to a much slower BPM, it's, it's not going to sound right. So the tempo is slower, but the slices are, are uh, kind of pre-made to, to play at a faster tempo. So to adjust for this, we can use the unit synth param and use the value of C. What this will do is it'll take each of the eight samples being played and set them equal to the length of one full cycle. Now, 
that in itself is not good. We, it would uh, make one sample eight times longer than we want it. We want each sample to be exactly an eighth of one cycle. So in combination with the unit, we specify a speed of eight. So this has like a, a multi multiplicative effect. I can't remember the last time I used the word multiplicative. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, so what we're saying is stretch each slice to a full cycle and then multiply the speed, play, the playback speed by eight. Uh, so it really will then make um, each slice exactly one eighth. And it sounds like this at our tempo of 140 BPM. So now if we change the tempo in real time, it should all just work. So that's pretty cool. Just a nice automated way of uh, fixing up your, the length of your slices. All right. so. The next thing to really kind of achieve that jungle or break core type style, if if that's what you're going for, um, is to have different breaks played together. So one, maybe maybe the most obvious way to do this is to have a second break and then divide the entire cycle by two. So this will play one break and then another break, uh, alternating in cycles. And sounds like this. So that's kind of cool. And then, you know, we can add, uh, you know, another break uh, and then just change what we're dividing by. So this, um, whatever we divide by, that number has to equal the number of samples in here to make sure that the number of slices per cycle stays at eight. And um, yeah, just it allows us to kind of iterate through the, the different break samples we've got. So that's that's kind of interesting. Um, however, this Acuma 4 sample, as you may recall, has 32 different samples inside of it, and we're but we're only using an uh, an IRAND of five. Now I could change this to 32, but you know what if Acuma 2 had you know some other number? Uh, basically, now we're we're using a, a, a value greater than what these one and two breaks really need. It still works, but Dirt is doing some caching behind the scenes now that it doesn't need to, or it's loading more samples than it, it actually needs to. So, and the other thing is that this doesn't allow you to, to be as flexible with each of these breaks. And it also makes for a longer pattern. And I like to keep things short. So let's go back to this. So what I like to do here is I like to use the, the slow cat function, which just takes an array of sounds or an array of patterns like so. So I can put my three breaks in like this. And now each break can have a different IRAND value if, if I so choose. So what slow cat does is it concatenates each pattern uh, together one after the other, and it plays them at the original speeds. So it just plays one, then it plays the next, and then it plays the next, and then it wraps back to the beginning. And so that sounds like this. So it's the exact same thing I was doing when I was dividing by three, except um, now we can add another one and I don't have to divide by four and change that value. I can just, I can just keep adding you know, as many as I want here and deal with each one separately and not have to worry about the dividing, which is kind of nice. The other thing is that I now have control over each individual break to do something unique with, with just one if I wanted. For example, maybe I want to do some crazy thing with acceleration on this one and maybe this one I want, I don't know, I want to pan it really quickly or something like that. That's 
kind of an extreme example, but um, just to kind of demonstrate, now you have control over each break. Uh, okay, so now that we've got our concatenated set of breaks, then you can apply a function to the entire slow cat result. So one thing that I abuse terribly is I will use fold every and um, beat shifting to, to kind of have the entire result of that uh, kind of move around in time. And 0 0.25 isn't a very significant example, but if I really make this like a large value like this, you, you can start to then see um, you'll hear each break almost blend into each other a little bit um, if you get this this shift value right. You just have to kind of experiment, but uh, uh, sounds like this, I guess. Um, yeah, so it just adds a bit of variation, and of course... Um, I like to use slow spread, or you, you can you can put any kind of conditional effects or additional transforms in here to really uh, make things interesting. You know, I'm just making this up. Um, maybe we'll do some course, and I don't know, chop, stut. Um, so I, I like to affect the entire uh, chain of breaks and, and just really put some transforms and effects on them. You get the idea. Um, and then another thing, uh, so I guess this is the last thing I want to mention. After you get your, your breaks going, uh, you can actually include this. Now, I, I love using stack. And I will put the slow cat in a stack and then maybe put something else in there. I don't know uh, what a good example is. Let's just... I'm just making this up. So I'll create a baseline here, just a separate example. All right, so that's the baseline. And now what I can do is put that inside of my stack with Slowcat. And I can then, you know, fold every or do some effects on top of the entire stack. Um, so it, it kind of adds a little bit of melodic or textual qualities along with your breaks. Of course, you could put your baseline outside of, you know, that D1 as well and have your breaks separate. That's cool too. Uh, I like to put everything, I like to put as much stuff as I possibly can in one stack and then break my computer basically is what I'm trying to say. So, um, yeah, that's about all I wanted to show. Um, so one thing I have not done much of is, is use this technique with, uh, like non break loops. So if you slice up, let's say, uh, some sort of, you know, synth line or bass line or vocals, uh, actually vocals would be really cool to try slicing up. And, uh, you know, do the same thing. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway, this is how I use breaks these days. It's kind of fun. Um, the slicing can be a little bit of a, you know, tedious task up front. But um, if you can find a good automated tool to do it, that helps. And I think the, the payoff in the long run is very helpful because it allows you to really be expressive with... Um, sliced breaks quickly in front of an audience. So that's, that's how I do it. 
and maybe maybe you will too maybe you will do it this way too and if you do then that's great so that's all i got and hopefully this was helpful and see you in the future